Today is not a usual episode because we're sharing with you how we've just gotten stuck in Italy due to the coronavirus travel ban. So we had just arrived in Italy for a two month stay when we first started hearing about the cases of the coronavirus here. Unfortunately, the situation evolved way faster than we could react and suddenly we were unable to get a flight or a ferry out of here. Stick around to the end of the video and we'll share with you where we're waiting out the quarantine in Northern Italy. To our subscribers, this video is gonna be a little bit different from our usual type. So as you know, we typically arrive in a location and we share a little bit about how to slow travel there and we also share our monthly cost of living while we've been staying there. Now we have just shared our slow travel in Florence video, which I'll link in the description below. But today we wanted to update you on what's been going on for the last few days. If you're new to our channel, I'm Stephanie. And I'm Jillian. We're a couple who's slow traveling across Europe with our two dogs. We've been on the road for six months now. So if you're interested in how to's related to slow travel, you have come to the right place. So do click the subscribe and notification button so you don't miss out on an episode. But today we're talking about something totally different the lockdown in Italy and how we tried and failed to escape. And we'll share with you where we're taking shelter to wait out the quarantine. First, let's start with a little bit of background to our trip to Italy. So we arrived with the intention of being here for two months. We we're gonna spend the month of February in Florence and then the month of March in the town of Lecce, which is all the way in the south. Then on April 1st, we were gonna hop on a ferry and take it across to the town of Split in Croatia. So during the month of February, we heard the cases coming out in the north of Italy, but we weren't too worried yet. Little did we know how quickly the situation would evolve. So on Monday morning, I went to my gym in Lecce, as per usual, to do a bit of a workout, and I discovered that it was preemptively closed for the week, even though the quarantine was still in the north. That's when we realized that maybe we needed to be taking things a little bit more seriously and we started to discuss our options for getting out of Italy a lot sooner than we planned. We still had a full three weeks left to our trip. On Tuesday morning, we woke up to the news that the quarantine had been spread all across Italy. We knew that we were in the wrong place and that if we didn't get out soon, that we might just get stuck. We agreed that we needed to leave Italy by that week. Now, the ferry company that we planned to use originally to go from Italy to Croatia technically had a ferry running that Friday. That would be the earliest possible time when we could leave. We called them just to confirm and they said actually it was not confirmed and that we should check in again the next day. On Wednesday, we woke up to the news that other countries were closing their borders to travelers from Italy. We knew we needed to act much more quickly and we booked a flight from the nearest airport, which was two hours away, to Budapest, Hungary. This was the cheapest and closest destination that we could find that was still accepting travelers from Italy. So we just took a few hours to quickly pack up and then we hopped on a bus to get to the train station. As we flee the scene here in Italy, which has entered a quarantine, uh, not nationwide as of yesterday and today with other countries shutting their borders we decided it's time to buy a plane ticket and get on out of here. So we're actually flying off tomorrow morning but today we have to take the train to Bari and so far we packed up I think pretty efficiently, cooked up a bunch of food and uh, yeah every, everything's in, we're, we're on the bus, so we're headed to the train station. We took a train that afternoon to Bari in order to catch our early morning flight at 6 a.m. and we camped out in a hotel room near the airport, ready to wake up at 3 a.m. so that we could get out of Italy. We woke up in the middle of the night with our phones ringing and ringing and ringing. It was our families getting in touch with us to let us know that Hungary had closed its borders to travelers from Italy and our flights were cancelled. Additionally, we found out that Croatia had also closed its borders, so really our options were starting to close off now. So we quickly jumped online to start looking at what other options we had to fly somewhere else in Europe instead. When it suddenly occurred to me that we actually have a friend with a holiday home up at Lake Como. Now with country after country closing its borders to Italy, it seemed unlikely we were going to be able to get out, so we decided to shoot him an email and he answered right away and offered up his place for us to stay, so we were able to retreat and take shelter here up in Lake Como. So we managed to get just a couple hours more sleep that night, 
We caught the 7.30 a.m. train, which went from Bari through Milan all the way up to Lake Como, which was a nine hour journey for us. Now, the virus situation and the quarantine are both quite serious here in this region because this is, of course, the Lombardy region, which was one of the original epicenters of the virus here in Italy. So the quarantine is very well established. And even as we were coming in with our, all of our luggage, speaking English with our two dogs, everyone looking at us very confused, why were we coming in? People were lining up to be able to leave Lake Como. They all had documentation in their hands so they could validate to the military who was screening them why they were, should be able to leave. So you might wonder why we would head into the epicenter of the outbreak, but in fact, this is probably the safest place that we could be as we're able to stay in this tiny little village and really have little, very little contact with anyone and hole up for safety for the rest of the quarantine period. So we bought three weeks worth of groceries as soon as we arrived and we're just hunkered down in isolation here in what is a very beautiful setting. So we do feel quite fortunate to be here. So fortunate. So again, this is a very serious quarantine zone. So as soon as we arrived, we were issued a piece of paper that said that we were allowed to move from the place that we were staying at, basically to the grocery store, and that was it. We can't stray any further from those two places. Everything is closed here except for grocery stores and pharmacies. And to go to the grocery store, there's a limit on how many people can go in at a time. So everyone is waiting around outside, widely dispersed because you have to be at least one meter apart. And there's security, making sure you follow the procedures to sanitize your hands and wear gloves before entering. So despite any restrictions though, we again feel very fortunate and very grateful to be here. We're here with our two dogs, we're able to at least enjoy the beautiful scenery even if we can't move about from town to town at all. And certainly our hearts go out to all of those other people who have been affected in much worse ways than we have. So this is where we expect to be for the next few weeks, really not sure how long. And once again, the situation escalated so quickly that we just weren't able to find an exit. While we're sitting here in quarantine, we would love to hear from you. So let us know in the comments below how your life has been affected by the virus. And if you found this video helpful or interesting, do give it a thumbs up. We actually still have some videos from our month in Florence, which will be coming out in the weeks ahead. If you hit that subscribe and notification button, you'll be sure not to miss them. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe and well, and we'll see you next time.